You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm joined again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, it's Friday morning. How are you today? It is going great. It is Friday, the end of the week, Pete, and I am just excited for the weekend. Awesome. Father's Day weekend coming up. Any big plans? Yes, actually, I'm just going to be in the backyard uh, barbecuing, smoking some brisket, smoking some wings. Uh, I know it's triple Even digits. with the heat, the heat's not going dis- to discourage you from that at all? Pete, I have such passion for barbecue and for grilling. I am like the mail service. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom at night stays these Ricky. curries away. Ricky, <laughs> None of those. Ricky. It, you just offered yourself as the mail service. Are you sure? Are you sure? No, no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the United States Postal Service. Uh, just okay, to be clear to everybody okay. listening right, there. All right. I mean, you, you, you know, even though you're the HR guy, you, you tend to scare me a little bit with this stuff. Uh, then that you know, means I'm I, doing my job then, right, Pete? So here's the thing, because <laughs> if I did the other thing, I will make no money whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Maybe I would, because people would pay me to get away from them. So maybe oh, that's a good. Oh come on, man! <laughs> you, you know that's that's yet another thing you can add to your um yeah you know, to to your arsenal, the mail service. <laughs> like, <laughs> this show's it. starting off great. <laughs> yeah, so we are. We, well, we do we do have a purpose today, yes. and that and that and that purpose is to answer try to try to answer a question or at least maybe debate it, one that I think a lot of organizations struggle with. When, when hiring leaders, um, certainly at a time like this where yeah, it is such a tight labor market that uh, you know, all the challenges are exacerbated right now, right, when it, when it comes to hiring. And, and listen, it's great for, for employees, great for anyone who's looking for a job, but it makes it difficult for organizations who need to hire talent um, when, when, the, when the labor market's this tight. So this particular question is one – I suspect it, it, companies are, are facing often these days, and, and, and the question is this. When hiring a leader, how much do you need to consider their soft skills and, and personality and ability to lead, generally speaking, versus the specific background and experience they have in the area that they're going to be leading? Can you sacrifice that specific experience for – yeah, you know, the their leadership skills and traits, and if so, to what degree? Oof. So that's a good one because from my HR training, what I'm supposed to say, Pete, is for what I was on the resume, skill set, skill set, skill set. Only focus on their skill set, and that's not wrong. Focusing on their skill set, but let me give you this example, right? I'm going to answer the question with an example. Let's say that I am looking for somebody, a, a, a prolific leader, somebody who's really charismatic to lead a lot of great minds. And I'm talking about 25 people. And we bring this person in solely because it's of their skill set, of their background, of the technical aspect of their resume. But this person can't get along with anybody, right? Mm. So I now have 25 people on a team all who brings amazing talents to the organization and they do a great job. And if I bring one person in to lead them and this one person cannot get along, they don't have chemistry, they don't build relationships with their team, I don't care how many PhDs they have, I don't know if I'm gonna bring that person in because I think that's gonna sabotage the team because maybe the team is not gonna work great together just because they don't get along with their boss or people don't get along with each other. So these, especially these days, Pete, um, I, I look for minimum skill. I mean, I'm sorry, the minimum requirement for the job. But I also equally as important, I look for work ethic and I look for chemistry because and that's a fine line. It's a good balance. HR leaders and people who have hiring authorities need to balance, right? Because you've got to be able to bring somebody into the organization who's who's got the right soft skills to get people motivated so they can use the skills we hire them to use. I don't know if that made sense or not. It, it does, but I want, I want to uh, challenge you on something and ask okay. you to, to clarify something else, which I was, I'm a little surprised to hear you say, mm-hmm. but I think it, it's 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 not a shock given that uh, I, I see ads lately for artificial intelligence based recruiting tools where they say well, you, know, you don't you, you don't need to look beyond the resume essentially right take all the bias off off the off the table and while that's 
admirable it, it is in terms of what it's attempting to achieve. You said that I just should look at the resume to make sure the skill and background is there. I mean, it, should anyone actually hire that way? I mean, it, you know, and take personality out of the out of the equation. And it, you know, that's a you know, look. We're we're a, we're a sales organization. <laughs> um, when we hire, when we recruit on behalf of our clients, we we consider very strongly the um, you know the the person's soft skills and are they going to be a good fit in in the culture for the environment, whatever that environment might be. Every organization has its own distinct um, culture. Mm-hmm. So. Should you really do that? I mean, is that would the HR guidebook say to <laughs> not c- consider anything beyond the resume? Well, it doesn't. I mean, it's that's not a law. I mean, that's not like policy number forty five point eight, right? So it, it, it's so HR people do have <laughs> there is that have policy. Those, there right? is a policy. I, we don't know I what it is. I carry it in my left breast pocket everywhere I walk. And no, but look, um, it, it's it's from a legal perspective. That's what, and again, I'm not an attorney for everybody listening. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, but I would have to assume from a legal perspective, they will want us to go that route because that eliminates any possibility of making a hiring decision based on something that has not nothing to do with skill, right? And it could be based on something that's illegal, like, uh, you know, age, sex, national origin, things of that nature. I'm not saying they're mutually ex- ex- exclusive, but that is that that is what the training is supposed to uh, to help you with at the very least as a, as a, as a minimum foundation. When the HR person starts getting in there and we start interviewing, right, then we take the skill set a along with the personality B and C making sure the chemistry is there with everybody else all of those things together. That is what I advise my clients I tell my students and everybody I talk to that's how you're supposed to hire. Those so, three things together. So let me ask you, imagine a scenario where you, you have, you hire just based on background and experience. And, and mm-hmm. so the resume, uh, just because someone lists something on the resume doesn't mean they actually did it or, or, or have that skill to a significant degree. But let's say you have a way of verifying that everything on the resume is true. And that is the only thing you considered when hiring and everyone in, in the organization was hired <laughs> Only to, <laughs> based on matching, you know where I'm going with this, their resume uh, with the job description. I can't imagine a more dystopian sort of just wrote, uh, imagine that company. I mean, do you think it actually <laughs> could exist somewhere? I mean, it would be a heck of an experiment to see play out, wouldn't it? Where so, no, <laughs> no personality, uh, you know, soft skills whatsoever were considered with hiring. What would that company look like, do you think? Oh, my goodness. I have no, I, 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 I don't know. So as, as you're asking that question, I'm picturing myself painting myself in a corner because <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, I see where he's going with this. Look, so I'm not saying let's not interview, right? Because it, the interview is crucial. It is crucial that way you could tell how that person communicates. But to answer your question, what kind of an organization might that look like? I don't know, the military? Because <laughs> I mean, that's about it, right? There you go. Yeah. yeah. The, the military would be it, right? You're just, I'm not saying that people in the military are mindless because I used to be in the military, but you just need people to follow orders, at least when I was in, right? Now it's a little bit different, but you need people to follow orders. So you got that skill set, they'll train you fine, good. We didn't pay you to think, we paid you to act. Um, Which, I mean, I, I, listen, I, 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 that's a perfect thing to come up with. Um, and I think that's exactly what it would look like. I, had, <laughs> I, I didn't have that in mind when asking, but that hey we're not here for your your opinion we're not here for you to be innovative or creative or or any of those things that you know c- companies actually do value and look for some you know i think every organization wants to hire employees who are going to improve things right whatever that might be uh, make it better uh, you know, tomorrow than it is today except perhaps for the military when they they just want you <laughs> to do the job you're hired for and do it the best you can and if you don't do it god help you <laughs> you're going to yeah. be in trouble all right no. so 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 uh, all right, go go on, and then we'll move on from from this. Well, I was going to say, so so um, it's coming back to to the, to the civilian sector. Um, my personal opinion, it, it's chemistry matters. 
personality definitely matters, especially exactly how you said in the marketing space, right? Because people can put something on a resume and I mean, we can't take it as a gospel, come on, if I, if I like what I see, come on in, because I want to make sure that how I interpreted the information this person put that on the resume is exactly how he or she meant to put it. So I want to yep. make sure that my interpretation is 100% correct before I pull the trigger on hiring that person. Okay, good. All right. So we, we, we've got that, that box checked. So, so the other thing that you mentioned that I, that I want to ask about is you said that you want to make sure the person has a, the minimal skill, you know, based on the job description. In order minimum to required the skill, yes. Yep. yep. So what about when they don't? What, what about when you know, they need to have, I'll just say, you know, 15, you know, 10 to 15 years of IT experience? They need to have... Um, been technical, maybe have a technical degree, work, worked in that area, um, managed a technical team, you know, develop solutions, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. for this CIO position that you're hiring for, and they don't have that, right? But they're an amazing leader. I mean, they are the best leader that you've ever encountered. Let's say they're already in your organization, so you don't even have to take anyone else's word for it. And you think, Boy, this person w would would be really, really good uh, to lead the IT organization, but they don't have. They don't. They, yeah, they, they they can. Yeah, they can spell IT. Maybe right. <laughs> they they know what it stands for. Is that is that a risk worth taking? And and if so, you know, or if not, why? If so, yeah, why? Maybe. Man, Pete, you're 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 these 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 questions are spot on. You're making me think on a Friday. Why? Why are you I, making me think oh, of Because <laughs> we're That's behind right. microphones we're on, on camera. That's sort of, <laughs> That's sort, of no. sort of what we signed up for today. It, it, it is, right? No, so look, um, it, it's that's a great question, and here's why. Too many people focus more on skill, on the skill that's on paper than anything else. But let's say, for example, um, following your question, that we interview somebody and they don't have the 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 skill set that we're requiring. If I'm going to bring them on board, they have to completely blow our socks off in the interview with their personality and charisma. Because here it but that but that's a double edged sword and, and and we really have to be careful in making a decision like that because here's why. Here's the risk you run in bringing somebody in to lead a group of 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 individuals where this person has a little bit less skill set. Uh, technically, technical wise, than the people they're leading, you run the risk of the people not respecting that person's authority. Because right. how can yeah. that person possibly lead me, guide my work, correct my work, course correct me, give me feedback, give me coaching, if they don't know what I'm doing? Right? But if their charisma, if their motivation skills, if their ability to bring people together is that much more higher, more valuable than the slightly less skill set that we're looking for, then I think that's a win-win. But if they're even keel, at the very least, you've got to be able to bring in those 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 minimum qualifications because you and I have had this conversation in the past in passing. When somebody starts in an organization at the bottom of the totem pole, they have to be incredibly uh, 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 um, proficient in their position. They got to be really technical. But if they're not leading anybody, the people skills don't necessarily have to be there. As you climb up that ladder of success, if you climb up that corporate ladder and you start getting bigger teams, people reporting to you, the less technical you have to be and the more people centric you have to become in order to manage, all, well, excuse me, not manage, in order to lead all those human beings to make sure you bring out the best in them. So I think it's incredibly important to take a look at charisma and people skills, but if we're gonna pick that, over technical skills, it's got to be a humongous, it, it's in balance for me to actually pull that trigger. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think it's all in, it's a, it's a risk because that's how I, I think I asked you, yeah. but I think it can be a risk worth taking for the right person. I, I, I think in, in the reason I say that I'm a little biased from my own experiences with this, where I think that there, there are people who do, and there's people who manage, and those are very different skill sets. There, are, you know, the best doers aren't yeah. often very good managers, and 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 that, and, and the inverse of that can be true. So you could be an amazing leader of an IT organization without being a very good technical 
contributor your, yourself. Now, how, how you get that opportunity when you haven't risen through the ranks is, 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 a, different, is a different question. But, you know, I, I think uh, you don't have to necessarily meet those minimal requirements that your you don't have to know as much as your team. Right. And, and like, you know, look, I'll give you an example right now as time has gone by with the, the role that I'm in with Four Corner. Uh, I it was 15 years ago. I knew how to do the job entirely. Mm-hmm. It, it, but now I don't. I don't. I haven't kept up with the tools we're using now. I haven't kept up with the software that we use now. I uh, because I don't do it every day. And so I could argue pretty effectively that a lot of what happens in our recruiting process today is. Uh, I am not equipped to do myself, right? And so, yeah, that I think that's a natural evolution at times. Yes, but you can spot when things don't go the wrong way, right? So you have that background, you have that knowledge. Because I'm with you that that it's you maybe you don't know the the small details and ins and outs of the different processes as a recruiter, but you've been in this industry long enough and you've had that. 20,000 foot view strategically, you've had that that experience where you can tell that something's not right, right? Yeah. And and you can tell that where, where you have to make a left or a right. It's exactly how you said, Pete, that is a natural evolution up in that corporate ladder, which people need to be cognizant of and you can't forget, um, especially when people keep going up and they get at the top. Look, I think wasn't, um, oh my goodness, I forgot the name of the company, the uh, Magenta cell phone. Oh my goodness, T-Mobile, T-Mobile. They, uh, I think a couple of years ago, they got a CEO who's never, ever been in the telecom industry. Is that the, the guy who's all, always on Twitter, who like is a chef and John does... Legere, no, no, the other guy, he <laughs> left. <laughs> no, okay, no. The, that guy, John, uh, I don't know why, even why I know that name, but he's the-, the Cause the, he's always on Twitter, like, that's right. Yeah, that's like cooking Twitter. <laughs> That is awesome. Hold on. I am so sorry, sir. For some reason, I got something. There we go. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Somebody's calling me. Something about work. I don't know. I'm kidding. It's that, it's that mail service <laughs> getting around already. <laughs> already, man. I do have a group on. No, look. So, so here, I'm kidding, folks. <laughs> I came out really fast. <laughs> no, John Legier. Now, he was, he's a really good example, uh, example, example because um, he's, he is, he has a big personality. And the reason you know that is because he has a huge presence on, on Twitter and he, people resonated with him because they don't see a CEO. They see somebody who enjoys cooking as much as I do. They see somebody who enjoys this, this, that's what we know him. To me, Pete, that is a really good leader, but he's no longer there. He went to do something else and they brought somebody else in who's never worked in the, uh, in the cell phone industry before. So that tells me, yeah, And, and they're doing good. I mean, I think they're number three right now. I haven't checked that in a while, um, but that's a great example of depending where you go in any organization, what position you take, that if you got people under you, especially if you're leading executives and you need those executives to act and have people under them to act, you've got to be one heck of a charismatic person to make that happen. Now, people are going to push back on that because that that insinuates that you only have to be an extrovert to be a really good leader and that's not true there's some introverts who do the same thing but they have a harder time in doing that because more people react more to that charisma that extrovert type of personality than introvert and i feel bad for the people who are introverts in those positions because they have to work just that much harder to get that much out of their employees sure and i think the point that you make about uh, the very large organization CEO is relevant in this discussion where if you are managing a team doing the work it directly, you probably have to know as much, if not more than that team to help them. Yeah. Now, but if you are managing the person managing the team, there you go. That, now, now you need to, to be more of a people person, have a feel for you know, the, the situation and, and, you know, offer guidance and, and leadership and mentorship that isn't necessarily about the specific task that's being done, but more situational, more, I'd say, transferable from one um, situation, one, one department, one industry to, you know, to the next. And as you go up that chain, so the guy who's running a, a cell phone company probably has 
absolutely no idea and, and never did know how a cell phone was made at, at, at any technical level, right? Yeah. Conceptually, sure, but couldn't couldn't configure any part of that themselves, right? And so I think that's that I think that's probably the um, the biggest factor in this is how close are you to the work that's being done versus managing the organization or the direction that the that the organization is going and and so I think the closer to the work the more the more knowledgeable you probably have to be that is a great example that that you just hit because you know somebody to come in to the top spot in any organization their their skill set needs to be a are you able to turn this red into black number one that's what all CEOs want to know which is it's that that's their job and B, how can you how can you motivate your lieutenants, your executives, to do the same thing with everybody else? So yes, I'm a, I, I, I'm a frontline worker. I get promoted to be a team lead. I still need to be proficient in what I'm doing. And now I'm dealing with with personalities. I get promoted. I'm managing somebody that was in the position that I just vacated. Now I got to be less technical, and I have to be more people centric. And as, as the more you go up, the farther away you get. Wow, that's the 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 further you go up, the farther away you get from the skill set and the things necessary to get you to where you are right now. Yeah, I mean that's I wow. think that's the solution. I think we I solved it, right? right? Now. We solved it. Yeah. Because Man, as I feel go, great. I'm clocking out, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> as you go up farther in any organization, the job probably starts to look very similar from one industry to the next, from one organization to the next, yeah. just like a small business has to do. You know, every small business owner has to deal with payroll. And you know, as they grow, they have to deal with the, you know, payroll, HR, rent, um, insurance. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. And I've, I've had discussions over the years with friends and some groups that I've gotten together with where um, other business owners <laughs> who we all have the same challenges and, and we all the, the what uh, someone in a completely different industry has to deal with really resonates because you know it's it all it's either about people or about growth or like I said insurance payroll all these things that, that are common and similarly at a large organization when you're at the top right you, you it probably doesn't matter whether you're working in the finance industry or the auto industry at, at some level it's it's a it's about dealing with with uh, with issues that that do transcend that's you know, particular industry that you're in. So, well, man, I, I think uh, I think we, we know where it. we stand. So as as you, you know, depending on how close you are to the work that's being done, you know, put more value on the on this or less more or less value on this particular knowledge and skill that uh, that's necessary, and and then act accordingly. So at the end of the day, when you're looking. When you're looking to hire, right? Obviously, it depends on the position, on on what kind of skill sets you put more value on than than, than the other. The more higher they, the more higher in the position you are looking to hire to. I hope that makes sense. Nope. <laughs> right? The more pe- no, okay, nope. it. nope. it's just coffee, man. I, I, you know, folks. Earlier before the show, uh, Pete and I were talking about this coffee that I have, and it's called Death Wish. And uh, they're not paying for a sponsorship, but they're not. But oh my God, that thing gives you such a boost in caffeine, and I am just jittery. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to say here, Pete, is that as you are um, interviewing, as you're looking for people um, for your organization, the higher echelon positions, you have to look for those those people skills. Right, really good people skills, and the lower positions you've got to look for, for those technical skills. At the end of the day, if you remember that, you're going to end up with the right person for the right role every single time. Every single time. Sounds good to me. Ca- caffeine did its job and, and got you to the finish line, Ricky. <laughs> Roger that. Awesome. awesome. Well, great. Well, th- thank you for listening today. Everyone have a, have a great rest of your day and drive safe if you're in the car. And as always, we'd love. To hear any questions, comments, or or feedback, ideas for new shows, Ricky, I did check uh, just yesterday. We have a couple questions that have come in, so I think we I think we're due for a Q and A episode. Oh yes, sir. Yes, yep. sir. I'll I'll be here. Awesome. Well, well, thank you for listening. We look forward to uh, connecting again soon. Roger that. Have a good one, folks. Drive safe and good night.